Good morning. Good morning, my friends. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. It is January 19th. And I'm so excited to be here at bright and early 6:30 a.m. The market has just opened and it's cranking already. Um, you know, I don't know where you are in the world at this current moment, but here in Fremont, California. The wind is blowing my house down. I swear there's a big bag wolf out there and I am full of little pigs in my house and we are scared. <laughs> um, it is just, it's been crazy windy the last couple of days. I'm shocked that there isn't more damage going on. Um, but uh, yeah, it's been interesting trying to button down the house and make sure it doesn't blow over. So hopefully it doesn't get too much crazier than what we're experiencing at the moment but uh you know never know there's this palm tree actually i got to tell you guys this there's this palm tree just um there's this palm tree just beyond uh, uh the house you can see it in the distance it's not far it's it's an old one it's got to be uh at over 100 feet in in length and um uh last night and this morning, I had to check again to see if it's still there. It was swaying back and forth and back and forth. And I was just thinking, oh, my God, if that thing does not have solid roots, it is, it is coming down into like four people's houses. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's getting wild out there. It's getting pretty wild. And um, we are blessed to have a lovely pool. And the pool now looks like a pond for ducks. So I'm going to have to get in there and attack that. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have a new family of ducks in there. So lots of interesting stuff going on. Um, but yeah, let's, let's talk about these markets and, uh, and get cranking here. Um, so, uh, you know, we had, uh, we had a nice little three-day weekend, which is always wonderful. Um, I love getting a break from... Uh, just the, the monotony of five days of, of consistent action in the market. Plus, it just it's nice to sleep a little bit more. Um, and, we're, you know, the, the nice thing about having that break is uh, almost always when you come back, there's something exciting going on in the market. Um, you can see right now it's a nice little pop going on here. There we go. There's a nice little pop going on in the S&P. Decent size pop in the 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 Nasdaq, the Russell, the Russell is still just making excellent gains here, um, and the VIX is uh, staying low. Um, so it's it's a pretty good day, a pretty good day in the market. Um, the uh, the the dollar is reacting exactly how we would expect that correlation to, um, and I'm actually going to pull up uh, some correlations. So. Um, when I, anytime I talk about correlations, uh, correlations are huge in terms of how we trade um, equities, options, but most importantly, uh, Forex. Forex is kind of the, the correlation um, center. Uh, it's how you really look for Intermarket intermarket analysis, and when I talk about intermarket analysis, I'm talking about correlations. Um, what each individual pair might be tied to in terms of a, a driving force, right? Because at the end of the day, these are just currencies. They don't produce anything, right? They don't have um, financial statements of of profit and losses and 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 cash flow and et cetera, et cetera, right? They they don't. They don't make anything, right? They just they are just the exchange of, of goods and services. But so they have to be tied to something. So a lot of the time when we talk about when we talk about uh, uh, correlations, we're talking about what currency pair is tied to what. Um, so right now I have up the uh, the gold index here, uh, which is the XAU USD. Um, and if you guys ever want to know what I'm looking at here, you can always just take a snapshot of this market overview. There's many, many more than this, um, but this is just kind of the core ones that I pull up when I'm doing my market review. So gold is tied to so many things. It is the 
safe haven uh, indicator. It is the, um, uh, you know, it, it, it is still the world uh, currency in terms of how we value things. But slowly, as we all know, that's starting to slip. Um, but it, it still holds true that this is something that you can look at for a, uh, a an idea of what to expect for safe havens, right? So when we have the markets in complete in complete turmoil and and uncertainty, you look to gold to to see what it's doing. You look for trends and you look for all these things. Well, lately we haven't seen a whole lot. Um, we had a nice spike up which um, on this, let's go here to here, there we go. Um, and if you're wondering how I did that, if you have, if you're using TradingView, um, you just click select layout and then hit two, and then it allows you to pull up two different charts at the same time. So um, let's take a look at this real quick. Here we have gold and we had this nice little run and it started around the end of November and sold off pretty heavy right around the first week of January. So here we are, the end of November, right? There, there we go. And then the first week of January, right there. So um, what do we see here? What, what is the correlation? Um, what I'm noticing is uh, the correlation to equities is not really there, right? Um, if equities are rising and gold is rising at the same time, we don't really have a safe haven um, uh, uh, flight to, to, to differentiate there, right? So if, if people are worried about the market, they're going to dump their assets into uh, fixed income, gold, certain currencies like the US dollar and the Japanese yen, right? Um, so if we look at this, continue, thank you. Um, if we look at this, it didn't do that, did it? Um, it just kind of rallied at the, same, at the same time with the market. So why is that? What, what, where's the correlation? Why is, why is gold going up in the same direction as, as equities? Um, now it's not going to be exact for exact, you know, exact, exact, right? If this, the, if this is going up, this is going to go down, right? But typically they're going to be roughly in the same direction, right? Well, this is not really quite in the same direction. However, where you do notice that it was in the same direction is right around August. So let's go to August here. All right. So Let's see, that was beginning of August. Okay, here's the beginning of August right there. Huge rally, big sell-off. There's your correlation, right? And like I said, it's not gonna be identical to what we see in the S&P, but we have a trend here, don't we? A short-term trend. This is obviously in a bearish trend and it could be changing, but still for what we can see here, we have a bearish trend um, and here we have a bullish trend, right? So there we do have the, the correlation of, of the safe haven, people leaving the gold, leaving gold to get into equities because they pay out better, right? So um, let's, how do we look at that in terms of looking for Forex opportunities? Well, um, I'm, as I mentioned, I've been creating videos and um, because I'm a bit of a perfectionist and I wanna make sure that, they're, that they are good and it's good content and easy to follow, they're taking a little bit longer than um, I was hoping, but on the bright side, um, they will be done soon. But I'm gonna talk a little bit about what's uh, in those videos. And one of them is the currency pairs that are cor correlated to which specific equity index, et cetera. Um, so gold is technically a commodity, right? Even though we use it as um, a way of, uh, showing um, value in terms of how priced goods and things like that, right? The gold spot has been a, a form of valuation for forever. Um, then it went over to the US dollar. Now it could be switching to equities and crypto, who knows, right? But for now, it's still the dollar and gold. <clears throat> so, um, but overall, 
we don't really trade gold for services, do we? You know, when's the last time you even saw gold, like actually a gold bar or the actual small gold pieces that people um, hold for, for um, you know, rainy days uh, in terms of uh, some kind of asset to keep under their bed, right? When's the last time you saw it? You don't see it often. Um, so what is gold actually used for? Well, jewelry, obviously that's the first thing we think of, but it goes way, way further than that. Gold is used in so many, many things. Um, it is a great conductor. Um, and uh, it's so the metal itself, you'll find it in, in tons of different machines, cars. Um, you'll find some of it in cars. You'll find a lot of it in, in uh, different machinery components. So it's just, uh, it's a very much a commodity, right? So we need it to build things. So the countries that produce tons of gold are what I call the commodity forex pairs. And the commodity forex pairs are going to be your New Zealand dollar, okay, your Canadian dollar, okay, your Aussie dollar, and uh, that's pretty much it. So your New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar, uh, and Aussie dollar. So those are going to be your biggest players in the commodities field. So uh, let's go back to, let's bring this one here, and I'm going to go and bring that back up where you go. There it is. Um, so knowing that that is a correlation between the two, first thing I would probably do is I would bring up the dollar spot. Okay, so I've got gold up here and I'll bring up starting with the New Zealand dollar, right? So you can see that it's not really quite tied to uh, gold at the moment. And uh, normally the inner, inner market correlation there is pretty spot on up until COVID. So there's been a bit of a breakdown during COVID. Um, let's go here. There we go. So um, you can see that it was almost perfectly spot on here. You see that gold is driving up and it looks almost identical to this trend that we're seeing here. Um, and then for the last, um, what, five months, it has kind of broken down a little bit because um, while these are very much correlated to what's going on with, uh, with commodities, it's also very much correlated to what's going on with equities. So um, most of the time you can expect these correlations to be a good point of direction of how to judge what's going to happen, not just looking at charts, right? It's not always about technical analysis, even though there's a, a, a firm theory that you never need to look at any statements. You never need to look at any kind of um, evaluations, anything like that. You could make great money just using technical analysis, meaning looking at charts, looking for trend, looking for breakouts, looking for bounces, looking for all these things. There's, there's many people who believe that you can do everything by that. And I would agree. Um, I would agree to a certain extent. Um, when it comes to technical analysis, you can build systems like these that have oscillators. Then the oscillators tell you, you know, it's very specific rules, um, which we can do. Um, so if I get a crossover right here and it's above a certain level, um, I will sell. And if it crosses back up, I will get out, you know? so. Very specifically, um, if I were to use the MACD in its most basic essence of if it's crossing up, I'm buying. If it's crossing down, I'm selling. So just in its basic essence, if this is crossing bearish, which it did right here, then technically I'm supposed to sell at the close of this candle, okay? And I would put my stop, you know, who knows, somewhere up here. And I would not get out until this thing crosses back up, right? Well, technically that would have worked well for me right there. Um, but that's just an example of how you can use technical analysis. Well, uh, so far we have not done that in this group. Not to say that we won't build something that is very specific in a set of rules, okay? Or a rule-based strategy where 
we follow the exactly to the T what the, what the indicators are telling us. Um, but for right now, we have not done that. We've been using them more direction and we've been looking at what's going on with price and support and resistance, right? So that's what we've been doing. But there's more to it. The, the meat of what's driving these things is, is all these different back, is all the things that are going on in the background, okay? So um, you can see that the gold spot to the New Zealand dollar is, is a commodity, but hasn't fallen it. Well, um, gold is not really produced from New Zealand. Even though New Zealand is a commodity pair, that's not really where gold comes from. Um, there's all kinds of gold shows that have come out. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that on like the Discovery Channel and don't even ask me what they're called. I was, I was watching one just the other day and these people, like they literally drive around in the, in the cuts of, of, of Queens, um, uh, um, Australia. And, and they just dig for gold. That's all they do. It's kind of interesting. Um, but there's a point to that. Um, some of the biggest gold reserves in the world are in Australia. So Australia is something that we might look a little bit closer at in terms of how to correlate gold to a, a, a Forex pair. But if we look at this again, we have a correlation here for a little bit. You can see a nice bullish drive there and a bullish drive here, right? And then for the last couple months, it's continued to rally and this has not, right? So this is where you can say, well, um, these, are, these are very much correlated with each other um, until they're not. And so this is why you have to look at other driving factors. So let's go ahead and pull up um, the uh, S&P. Okay. So this looks a little bit closer, doesn't it, right? Um, and you could easily say that this is a very, very driving factor uh, a big driving, excuse me, a very big driving factor um, in how you would see what is driving this pair. So I'm looking at this and look at, at the S&P and um, where are we here? Did I just, I goofed. There we go. Um, I'm looking at the S&P and I'm looking at uh, the uh, ah, Australian dollar. There we go. And um, this keeps bouncing around on me. All right, fine. We're going to give you the S&P. There we go. There we go. Okay. Um, okay. So looking at the Aussie dollar and looking at... The S and P. Um, so I, I'm looking at the two here, and and what am I seeing? I'm seeing a much tighter correlation between the S and P and the Australian dollar. So we can see that even though gold has started to slip here, there's another correlating factor. But commodity pairs typically want to rally in the same direction as what equities are, because many different factors are reliant on. On these, on these countries' currencies. You know, when these countries' currencies are performing well, it means that commodities are form, performing well in general. So when the S&P is not performing well, it means that those commodities, commodities are not performing well in turn the, the forex position or the currency is not performing well. So it's, it's not overly complicated. We don't need to think about this too much. And the reason we don't wanna overthink about this or spend too much time on this is because it's more of just a guide, right? You don't want to say, okay, if this is, if this is going up today, this will go up today, when it really did go up today, right? Um, and we, we don't want to say, if this, if this breaks this level, I should buy this right here at 32, or 38.20. Let me, let me zoom in a little bit closer on that. So if we make a new high and we break 38.20 on the S&P 500, and uh, the Australian dollar is uh, maybe trading right around here. Because it made that break, I would not want to just straight up buy this. I would just look at this and say, okay, this is starting to make new runs. Let's look to this to most likely break this high. 
right? So we look at it and say, this is starting to make new highs. This will probably follow suit. If this breaks this high right here, we should look into buying this pair as an example, okay? So that's what I'm looking at here. That's, that's what I want to, bingo. That's what I want to uh, really portray to you guys is, is we need to start making sure that we're following the things that drive these currency pairs. And in turn, we need to follow the things that drive these equities. Um, so in, in the odds, in, in terms of gold, if gold is selling off, um, then we should look to, there we go, we should look to the S&P to probably start rallying. So it's been selling off, but the S&P is a little stagnant the, the last few days, and you can see it's stagnant here. So what would I look for here? I will look to see if this short-term resistance area right here, if we get a nice little pop above this resistance area here, I might look for this area to get broken. That's how I'm looking at these things. Because if gold is being bought into, it is most likely leaving here, right? They don't usually go hand in hand. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they do for short periods of time. But long durations, the trend, right? The overall trend, they don't typically go together. So if it breaks this, technically that would be on the short side, right? That'd be, or that would be on the uh, lower duration of time side. So um, just look to this. We want to look to this area. We want to see if it gets broken. Because if it does, there's a high probability that this side over here will in turn get broken. Okay? So let's keep our eyes peeled on that stuff. Um, the NASDAQ, it pretty much follows in terms of how we <clears throat> how we look at uh, uh, how how we look at correlations with with equities. It, if you were to ask, well, hey, what's what's if the S and P's uh, correlation to gold is like this, what would be the Nasdaqs or what would be the Russells? They're all the same. They're going to be all roughly the same. Okay. Um, if you're not seeing them follow any decent correlations, it's because they've completely separated from that, and then we don't look at it anymore right? So gold has zero correlation to the Russell 2000 right now. The Russell 2000 is, on its, is in its own little world, okay? No one looks like the Russell 2000 right now in terms of an index, right? So we would not look at any correlations. We wouldn't even bother because it's broken. It's doing its own thing. It's making incredible gains. And, um, and that, that's that, right? But the VIX, the VIX is our correlator for the overall risk index. But this is not something that I would say, if this pops, this will, or excuse me, if this pops, then this will sell off, vice versa. Um, I've talked about this quite a bit. These two are pretty well correlated, but look, this thing doesn't trend. This trends, the S&P trends, the NASDAQ trends, but the VIX doesn't trend. The VIX is really just telling us, hey, there is volatility in the market right now. Lots of selling and lots of buying. That's all it does. So in terms of a correlation where we look for trends, we don't use the VIX either. We really just look for uh, volatility to see if things are hot. And right now, they're not. They're not that hot. They're just, they're, they're just nice and stagnant, which is fine, right? Uh, volatility is good for us when we're doing certain plays and bad for us when we're doing, when we're doing short plays and bad for us when we're doing long plays, right? So um, let's jump over to a couple of our um, equity positions real quick. Um, APA. Okay. So um, we shorted, uh, we, we did a, sh a, a bull put spread on this, right? Which is in itself a, a, bear, a, bullish, uh, a, a bullish contract or a, a bullish stance. However, we did go short one of the legs, right? So when volatility spikes, it can be a good thing for us because anytime you're shorting an option contract, that's going to put more implied volatility, right? And implied volatility can be good for us. So um, when I look at these things, I look to see if we're getting that, we might be benefiting. But at the same time, 
if Apache is uh, highly tied to whatever the market does, if the market sells off big, will this sell off big? Then that's not necessarily good for us. So you know, you, you kind of have to watch these things. They're, they're, they're tight little correlations and sometimes they're intraday, meaning they happen daily versus they happen weekly or something like that. So I wanted to discuss correlations with you guys. I hope that didn't go too far beyond what uh, you understand from, from gold, is, gold is good during times of uncertainty and vice versa. It's really just for you to look at these things and say, hey, is the correlation there? It is there. Great. I will look for levels. I will look for levels of support and resistance. And if on if gold is breaking a support level, I'll look in turn for the uh, for the S and P to go the opposite direction. I'll look for a play up there just to just to give yourself a a direction. So on Apache, everything's looking good to me. Um, so far, uh, let me go ahead and just bring this back to one. Actually, I think that is here. Yeah. Continue. Okay. All right. Apache is looking good to me. Um, if uh, our short strike here is 1750, we're pretty close to that short strike, which is great. That's, uh, that's fine. Because if it breaks our short strike, um, I have a, uh, you know, I have a great uh, a bias of, of support, or sorry, I have a great support and resistance area right here. So I know that this is an area of contention. This is an area where price will struggle, which is good for us. We want it to struggle here because if it does and it comes down to here and then maybe rallies, we might have the opportunity to close our long leg and potentially make more money on this trade which is always a great thing, right? Anytime you get into any of these spreads, you guys, anytime, um, when if let's just say we shorted it here, which we did, right? We shorted it here and price just took off. Well, wonderful, awesome. That's, that's always nice, right? Um, but the max that we can gain is the max profit on that. So on this particular one, let's go and pull up our trades here. On this particular trade, uh, we're only going to make 40 bucks, right? 40 bucks per contract. That is the max that we can uh, make on this particular trade. So if the max we can make on this particular trade is 40 bucks, then um, I'm not overly thrilled for it to just run away. I want the ability to make a little extra money here and there. Um, if it doesn't, that's fine too. I'm always happy to make money. But um, if I can make a little bit more and bring in a little bit more squeeze, that's, that's kind of our, our, our ideal scenario. So if we see this start breaking down this way, that's good. That's good for us because if it can hold here and then rally, then we can make some money on, sh on closing that long leg and then we'll have more premium. So just to make sure we very, we very clearly understand that when I see price, say trading at 17, that means our long leg is 1650 is not going to be doing much of anything. But when I see it trading around 1650, then that means our long leg is going to be in a more um, um, positive position. So let's take a look at it. Our long leg right now is down 19 bucks. Well, of course it is. It's the position is, it's against the, the long leg by a dollar. But what if it came down to, say, you know, positive a few pennies? Well, this is going to be flipped. So right now it's trading around 1789. That's the mark on this. Um, and our short leg on Apache is 2350. So it's pretty close to that short leg. So of course, everything's going to be determined by what's going on with Delta, Theta, and Vega. Um, but all we can all we can look at here and say, all right, um, in in correlating to how much I can expect to make on this, um, if this comes down to our long leg, we'll probably be up a few bucks. So then I'll look at how much did I, uh, how much did I pay for this? Well, let's take a look. I paid fifty seven cents to buy this sixteen fifty put. Okay, I paid fifty seven cents. So let's take a look and see where it is right now. 
it's at 57 cents, right? So most likely as this gets closer, if it does get closer to the 6050, it's going to increase in value, right? So if I paid 57 cents for it and it rallies up to say 97 cents, um, what is that? That's a 40 cent profit just, just right, right off the bat. Well, there's 40 bucks. And then I'll still have my short leg of 97 cents, right? So I'm trying to make sure that we, you guys very clearly understand this. This is why we, we don't mind if things come down in, in, uh, against oh, the overall spread, right? Technically, we want things to stay high, but this is why we don't mind because I've just now made 40. So I'm going to make 40 cents on this total, right? Um, if, if this thing ex uh, expires ab above 1750, I make 40 cents. Well, if I close this, let's say at 97, I've already profited 40 bucks. If this comes back and close and, and rallies above 1750, I'm going to make 97 bucks. Whoa. Okay. So now my net profit went from 40 cents to a buck 37 or 137. So $40 to $137, right? So this is why we get, we are perfectly fine with seeing these things sell off. Um, and, and let's just say hypothetically it really sells off and it doesn't come back. Well, that's fine too, because overall we're kind of excited about um, oil stocks right now. You know, this could be the, this could be the beginning of the rally um, that we've been kind of waiting for, for oil stocks, right? They've been depressed for quite some time. Well, they're just making nice trends. It broke above these resistance areas. So I'm feeling confident about this. So um, there's a lot of good opportunities with this particular play. Um, FCX didn't get filled. Um, so I canceled that. So if you still have that open um, and you didn't get filled, go ahead and close it. It's just doing a whole lot of nothing. So at this particular point, um, I want to see it uh, correct a little bit more. I would like to see it do a little bit of this before continuing up, right? Um, if it's holding this support level here, um, then it should come down to at least 29 bucks, which is where our um, spread was. It's just that um, it's just it took a little too long. So at the time that I placed this was, <clears throat> I think it was uh, Monday or Tuesday, one and two. Uh, anyways, um, our expiration was February 5th, Friday. So they gave us one, two, three, and four weeks, a little less than four weeks to play out, which I could easily see this taking some time to play out. Well, now we have three weeks. Um, and that makes me feel a little less giddy about it because I, I think we need that time. So um, if you haven't removed that trade, go ahead and remove it. And we're going to look for another opportunity on that one. ACB. Um, this trade is something that I looked at um, last week and we did get filled. And there was plenty of opportunities to get filled. If you did not get filled, um, I did the February 5th. Um, I wanted a little extra time, but I did get filled on the 13th, which was Wednesday. Okay, so we're only a few days into this. So um, there's still plenty of opportunities to do that. So let's take a look and see what it's trading at right now. So I did the 10 and nines. Let's take a look and see what's that, what is that going to cost us? Let's go ahead and bring this to a single. Okay, we're going to right click. We're going to hit sell. We're going to go to deep and wide. We're going to hit, oh boy. Deep and wide. One, one, two strike, vertical. All right, so it's a little cheap right now. Um, and most likely at the time of when I got filled, it was... Um, price was probably closer to 11 bucks. So not to worry. Um, one second here, guys. Excuse me. 
uh, not to worry. What I'm seeing right now is I'm seeing a little bit of correction. Um, this is one of the fun parts of the cannabis stocks right now. It is so uncertain what they're going to do. Um, so let's go ahead and draw some, draw some levels here. We had this huge area right back here where price came back down to and found its footing and then rallied all the way back up. This was um, about mid-year of 2018. So something happened and um, the stock hated it, found some footing and then said, we're coming back strong. Then hated it again and came back to the exact same level. Then rallied back, now came back to it and broke through. This would technically be considered a, um, a triple top. Okay, so there's a double top and then there's triple tops. So a double top would be one, two, break. A triple top would be one, two, three, and break. And it did break. Okay, um, so it has struggled quite a bit. Cannabis stocks have struggled across the board. But how long will they continue to struggle? Well, that's why we have been looking at this. Um, we saw this nice breakout here, but then it just came right back down. That was not encouraging whatsoever. Then it started holding its footing. That was encouraging. So now we're going to create a new level here. Okay. So it broke above this, this area of uncertainty, and it's starting to rally again. How much will it hold? I don't know. This could come all the way back down to this level, which is fine. Um, we would be perfectly happy owning this stock. So if you are not in this position at the moment, I think long-term, this does have the potential to at least get back to these levels right here, at least back to 19, okay? So knowing that, I, knowing that we have a really good shot of at least coming back to 19 in the short to long-term, maybe over the next uh, quarter to two quarters, um, we, we have a good chance of just holding this as an equity play and letting it run, making some premium plays on the side, right? So uh, if you're not in, let's see if price comes down to this 1110 area. If you haven't placed your order yet, you had plenty of opportunities to do this last week. Um, we never know when this thing is gonna come down and spike, right? I got put in on a fluke because this thing, when I put this in, Price is already starting to run. Um, let's see here. When I originally put this in, I think I, well, let's see, Wednesday. Okay, so that was the 14th right there. Okay, so um, so when I got in it, yeah, it was around 11 bucks and then started running and it just kept going. So these things, these things, they can just spike, run, and then go the other direction. So we want to put this trade in now. If you haven't already put it, you need to put it in. Um, because this thing could come down and then just continue its rally. And the further this gets away from this area right here, which is very good for us, the less likely you are to get filled. So make sure you go ahead and put that in. Um, I got in with a fill price of, where are you? Um, 38 cents. There was a little slippage there. I, uh, I, I really originally set it to 40. There's a little slippage there, which is no big deal. Um, so all you're going to do is you're going to bump this up to 40. You're going to hit GTC and you're going to call it good. And you're going to walk away as that, as this continues to go down, if it does, if it gets down to this area of 11 bucks, you're going to get filled. Okay. So you want to make sure you put that in now because just in case you're not watching, this comes down and then bounces off, you're going to miss it. So go ahead and do it. If it continues to come back down, we don't mind. That's perfectly fine for us. Okay, because uh, uh, overall our bias on this is, is bullish. So we see, this, we see this being able to continue to rally. Okay, so go ahead and put that trade in if you're not in yet. Um, T doc is killing it. Um, Apache, uh, American airlines. That's right. Uh, American airlines. Um, everybody in here should own, um, 
everybody in here should own a hundred shares. Everybody did this trade. Um, it's looking pretty good right now. Um, I'm getting ready to sell that call, 17 call. I'm getting very, very close. Um, I wanted to make sure that it didn't do this. This is, this is what I want to avoid. Because if our break even is at 1570, so right here, if our break even is down here, we're in, we're, we're positive right now. We're, we're, we're making money just on the equity play. What I want to avoid is I don't want to sell a call and watch this thing go, Wee! just start to make its run, right? I want to avoid that because then I lose all the money I could have made on that play, right? So let's see what happens in this area. If it starts to get stagnant, we will definitely sell that 17 call. Um, so let's just, let's just wait a little bit. I've called out to be ready. Um, I know I said the time is now and it's very close. It's very, very close. Um, I wanna make sure that we, 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 we don't get in the way of that rally. We don't wanna get in the way of us making more money. Uh, okay, let's take a look here. What was I looking for? That was it. Okay, so I went through all the stocks there, went through all of our positions. Um, oh yeah, that's right. I was going to look at how much it costs uh, for our American Airlines. Okay. Our American Airlines single, if we sold the 17, we're going to make about 50 bucks. Um, I think we could do better than that. So uh, we'll, we'll wait to see what happens. Although just keep in mind, as this continues to go higher, or sorry, if this sells off a little bit, we make a little less money. So that's why we're watching. That is why we're watching, we're waiting. If this gets stagnant in this area, that's when we'll go ahead and sell it so we can make a little extra money on that. We wanna, we wanna try and make at least, at least 50 cents on that contract. So that would be the ideal target, 50 cents. Okay, let's take a look at some Forex pairs real quick like. Um, let's first talk about our CAD chef trade. Um, so this uh, rallied up and broke right back down and it is doing the CAD chef thing. Um, so this is absolutely to be expected. Um, and I told you guys, this is kind of the way this thing rocks. Let's see, there we go. Um, so we had our breakout here, very exciting uh, that we got in down here. Um, but what did I tell you guys? I said, I'm not moving my stop yet because this could easily come back down. Um, if you'll notice here, we're in a bit of a trend line or a channel. So our neckline is here. We should just go ahead and move it up because it is made kind of a new neckline. So you can see tops out there, create some resistance there and here and now here. Okay. So this could just easily be channeling. We'll check, we'll wait to see what happens with this level here, but we want to add more positions. If this trend line or this, this giant uh, resistance area where it's hit one, two, and three times can hold, three times would be very significant. If it can hold here, we'll, uh, we'll look to add another position because I'm still confident that it's going to come back minimum to this uh, 7150 area and then maybe even up to this 7250 area, okay? So uh, this is gonna be a good play. Um, Euro dollar is coming back. Uh, it made a nice breakout here. Um, I was gonna send a call out on Thursday night, um, but this is one of those ones where at the time that I was watching it, this is what was going on. It was just all over the place, up and down, up and down. I was going to make a call out to sell it, uh, but I knew that it was going to need to, it was going to require a little bit of um, babysitting and um, babysitting at two o'clock in the morning is very difficult to do. You know, it's just, it's uh, for most of you, it's probably not what you signed up for. So that's why I didn't make that call. Um, so it broke out. There was a, a good little opportunity to make some pips there but it didn't, uh, it, it's not holding, it's coming back now. So on a long-term, this could be good 
for what do you guys see here? I'll tell you what I see in pattern terms. There we go. I see a head and shoulders. Hello. Let's try that again. Think, think, think here, maybe, right? So if this is a head and shoulders, if it is, we want to see price come back to this area where it broke out, right? Roughly around there. It could even go a little higher, right? Could, could, could do that and still be valid. It could even go up to here and still be valid. But we want to see it kind of play out here for a couple of reasons. One, um, whether or not this is going to be a head and shoulders, I still want to short this at this area. So I'm looking to see if this is going to hold. It could just be a short-term uh, uh, a short-term sell-off and a continuation, right? Something. Actually, let's go and adjust that. Yeah, it, this could just be a nice channel forming here. So if I go ahead and duplicate this. Hi, there we go. Thank you. If I go ahead and duplicate this. We could just be forming a nice uh, channel here and continuation. But when I look at channels, I like to see it actually channel. What I mean by that is um, uh, high, low, high, low. So if this is a channel, it's just going to continue on, which we expect anyways because of the dollar weakness, then we do want to try and get short to bring it down to here, which is what my call was for. I originally said we want to look to short this and take it down all the way down in to two to to one point two zero to one point nine five, which is here and there. So there's still an opportunity on that one. Be ready for a short call. Be ready for me to send that out. I'm going to be looking to get into this right here, right around this area if it can hold. So be ready for that one. New Zealand dollar. Um, this is broke out a little bit um, right here. There we go. Um, it's holding below it on the short term. We might try and get into this one short as well. We don't want to get short too many, right? Because they're all time, kind of going in a bullish direction or bearish the dollar, right? We don't want to be, we don't want to be bullish the dollar on too many pairs. Because if you're going in the same direction on everything and everything decides to go the opposite direction, you lose on everything. So you want to be able to hedge some things, right? And um, hedging, when I say hedging, I mean um, we don't we want we don't want to be short dollar and not long something else that goes in the in in a in a counter direction, right? So uh, there is some opportunities there. We could potentially sell that. We'll let, wait and see. The Australian dollar, this is one I've been calling up for a while. It broke this support level here. It's come back. Um, I still like it. Um, I'm just, I'm waiting to see kind of what happens here. Um, so this, it broke here and it started to come below these support levels here, but it didn't hold, right? So let's see what happens here. If it, can, if it breaks this area here, we definitely want to get short this. We definitely do. Okay. Some Canadian pairs to look out for. Um, there's two. There's the dollar CAD, US dollar, Canadian dollar. Um, so we're already long the Canadian dollar, right? We are long the Canadian dollar here. So we're already bullish on the Canadian dollar, but that's against the Swiss franc. So it's a little different um, because you should typically be bearish the Swiss franc in most cases. Um, that's just a, the safe haven asset, and there's not a lot of uh, risk on the market right now. So we're bullish the uh, Canadian dollar. So if we go ahead and buy this, technically we're saying we're bearish against the Canadian dollar. That would be hedging, right? That would be saying, um, that would be saying I'm bullish here, right? And now I'm bearish here. That would be considered a hedge play. But we're basing this off of technicals. So in some cases, that's okay. In some cases, you guys, we're going to do something, and I'm going to say this for a whole nother session, where we're actually long and short at the same time. So meaning I'm buying this and I'm selling this at the same time. So that will be a possibility. Um, 
Okay, so uh, this is breaking this. That's right, I was going to go to a longer term time frame. This is breaking this area here, and it may have some potential to run up. So we want to keep our eye out on that one. And then finally, the Canadian yen. Um, long term on this one. This has been stagnant for a while, and it started to break this resistance area, and it couldn't quite hold it. So um, I want to see if price can come back down just a little bit. Um, it started to, uh, I'd like to see it come back down to this area right here, maybe even right here. Okay. And then I would like to get long this, I'd like to get long this pair. Um, but, uh, that was, those were the two Canadian ones, the Euro yen. Um, this one is coming back strong It made a nice break of this channel. Um, and this would have been a really good, great sell opportunity into this support area here. Um, but it did not hold at all. We could have an opportunity to sell this again. Okay, so um, be on the lookout for a potential short on the euro yen. You see these rallies? These these are typically not sustainable, right? It doesn't just go down and then continue on. It doesn't just go up and continue on, right? So what you want to see is you want to see it sell off come back up, sell off, come back up, right? We want to see a nice trend. We don't want to see it sell off and retrace the entire movement. So this could have an opportunity to sell off again. We'll keep our eye out. Keep our eye out for that one. Okay, you guys, that is all I really had for you today. Um, there's, you know, there's lots of things in the works here. There's a lot of profit potential here. I really hope that you all are are jumping into these trades. If you don't feel comfortable doing certain strategies like the bull put spread or trading some of these forex pairs, that's okay. Um, you know, uh, it, it the the learning curve of trading can take a very long time. I've been doing this for ten plus years. It took me a very long time to get comfortable with my skin, and that's because I developed rules. And that is why you guys have a great advantage with starting with someone who's going to give you these rule base rule rule bases. Okay. I started with without that. Um, and I had to figure it out along the way. And then I started working with the pros and developing these things after losing many thousands of dollars. So I want you guys to avoid those scenarios. I don't want you to run into those situations where you're risking a, a bunch of money um, carelessly. So if, if you're, if you're in on, if you're in on these trades, then you're making good money right now. And I'm very excited for you. If you're not in on them yet, that's perfectly fine. Uh, be patient, take your time. If there's anything I can do to help you guys improve uh, your, 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 uh, your confidence level, your, your understandings, anything at all so that we can start to make you more profits, please message me, okay? I wanna make sure that you guys are getting the most out of this. And I wanna make sure that you guys are making money because that's what we're all here to do. So um, be on the lookout for all these trades that I made comments on. And um, that is all I've got for you guys. We will see you Thursday. Be on, the look on, look, be on the lookout in the chat for potential trade opportunities and successful trading to you all.